Wade, Peter Manianis on his 38th big promotion, welcome to the 8th annual Bob Rose Cup, where Peter salutes the great Collingwood champion, a boxing champion, the great Aussie rules footballer, and a gentleman of sport. Ten rounds of boxing for the WBF Australasian Pacific Light Heavyweight Championship. Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee is Malcolm Bulger. Now he's throwing his own. memory, Peter Farabee, Samantha Bulger, Tom Davis, your timekeeper, Abina and Dr. Abina is your ringside physician, members of the Professional Boxing and Combat Sports Board at ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to rock? Are you ready to box? We certainly are. Introducing first in the blue corner with Tony Solo, his mentor from Left Ridge via Geelong. Ranked number seven world of boxing right heavyweight in Australia. 18 professional fights, eight wins, two draws, four wins by knockout. At 81.90 kilograms, ladies and gentlemen, fondly known as the junkyard dog, Kane McKay. And across the ring in the red corner, Andy to win his second Victorian Championship from Greenvale. The reigning Victorian light heavyweight champion, Sam LeBruna, Louis Carica in the corner. Four professional fights, four wins at 79.25 kilograms, wearing a touch of gold with his black and white. The golden boy from Greenvale, Black Caparello! <laughs> Malcolm Butler to give referee's instructions. Good luck, Jim. Let's have a good clean fight. Obey my instructions at all times. Shake hands, not no more fighting at the bell. Good luck. Good luck. It's a main event. Welcome to Morven Town Hall, June 25, 2010, for Fight 7. It's the main event of the 8th Annual Bob Rose Cup, promoted by Peter Maniatis. I'm Patrick Scan, and joining me as co host tonight, SEN's Troy Zantuck. How are you doing, Troy? Fantastic. This is what the crowd have been waiting for. What's on the line is the WBF Asia Pacific Light Heavyweight title. And it's Blake Caparello, the Greenvale Golden Boy versus the Junkyard Dog, Kane McKay. Experience versus youth and fight bet odds three dollars for the junkyard dog McKay, who's in the grey trunks, and a dollar thirty for Blake Caparello in the black trunks and the white piping. And I've been looking forward to this one oh, for a long, long hasn't time. Hasn't every Victorian boxing fan been looking forward to this one? Blake Caparello, the youngster, 23 years of age, against Kane McKay, 32. Kane McKay's record: 18 fights, eight wins, eight losses, and two draws. And Caparello, the four and zero. And this is a classic boxer in Caparello versus puncher in McKay. Walk forward, tough, loves to fight. Been responsible for some wildly, wildly entertaining fights. And I think Blake Caparello has landed a couple of shots. Uh, Kane McCain there, blinking. So, although uh, Blake Caparello's four and zero, he's only got one knockout. He does show a lot of power. And that left hand. And as a young developing fighter, that left hand could come into its own, if not tonight, very soon. Blake Caparello with the southpaw stance, Kane McKay fighting with the orthodox stance. And I think what you just saw then will become the story of the night. Kane McKay trying to get on the inside, Blake standing on the outside. In his last fight versus Joel Casey, Blake Caparello has said publicly uh, that he's going to be better on the inside next time. He allowed Joel Casey back into that fight, which he eventually won. He won't be making that mistake today, so we'll see how that pans out. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a clash of personalities as, as well as boxing skills, these two boys. And there was a bit of warm feeling in the lead-up. Kane McKay saying he's going to shut up the mouth of the young buck. And Blake Caparello mysteriously saying a fit donkey won't win the Melbourne Cup as Caparello puts together. Excellent combinations, and he looks all the boxer, and I think that overhand left could be the money punch if this fight does open up in Caparello's favour. And what you see, what you get is McKay, old school, comes forward and loves to fight. You're going, I think if he's going to win Caparello, it'll be on, on the inside, and uh, he gets drawn into Casey's inside fight, so they're, they're things to take into account, but uh, massive wraps on Blake Caparello, the Greenvale Golden Boy, unloading. Unloading some big left hands and right hand combinations there to Joel youth, Casey. Youth, speed and technical skill are on the side of Caparello. And McKay just wants to turn this into an inside slugfest. And sometimes he gets his way and sometimes he doesn't. But McKay has fought the cream of Australian boxing. Les Sherrington, Sonny Michelangelo, Porky Lovett. He had a points war with Nader Hamdan. He almost uh, 
gave Tim Bell more than he wanted. And he's got on the... This is where you'll see McKay. This is where he has his finest moments, and he loves it in there. The native of Geelong just loves it. He goes to the body, but Caparello proving his equal on the inside and landing some very good timing and well with some of those left straight lefts over the top. Tremendous counter-punching there by Caparello. And what a great first round. And I think Caparello really uh, showed that he's willing to take it inside, Troy. Yeah, he's, uh, he's on the way up. He's on the elevator up to the penthouse. Blake Caparello. Last drinks. Seconds out. Round two. Let's get our teeth into this one. Main event. Fight seven of the Bob Rose Cup, the main event, Blake Caparello, the Greenvale Golden Boy versus Kane, the Junkyard Dog McKay from Geelong. And Troy, how did you have that first round? Yeah, clearly to Caparello. In a worrying sign for the McKay camp, uh, Caparello decided to allow Kane McKay on the inside. He got the better of the exchanges, and that was very interesting. So Kate, Blake Caparello being true to his word so far, but never rule out the Junkyard Dog. He's relentless, he's been in with the best, and there's certainly no quit in him, so he'll be coming all night. His job now is to test this young guy, find some chinks in the armour, and act as the gatekeeper for the division, which he loves doing. And if you get past Kane McKay, uh, you, you, you're doing something right in the boxing world. Absolutely, Patrick. And it's too early to call, and that's the big punch from Blake Caparillo. That's the one he said he would land. That big overhand left, and McKay comes oh! up, And he's caught McKay with some big shots, and this could be an interesting one. And he's calling! Okay. Caparillo! He's calling! McKay's calling forward! Reminiscent of Ricardo Mayorga, McKay drops his hands stupendously and takes some big shots from Caparello, but he's still there like How a true the hell Spartan McKay warrior. standing up? Like a Spartan warrior saying, I'll eat your power and come back for more. And he goes to the body again, Kay McKay, and that's why he's a great crowd favourite. Some unpredictable, unbelievable scenes here in the second round as Caparello opens up with a good right to the body. McKay 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 McKay's shown his chin and Caparello showing the full arsenal of punches, left hooks, straight rights. Again, pinning, pinning McKay in the corner. And this is where McKay loves it. But Caparello's saying to him, I'll take you on your own game and I'll rip your heart out right here if you don't want yourself, Kay McKay, because I'm young, I'm coming through, and I'm here to take a veteran tonight. But it's a long fight and Kane McKay's been long in these fights a lot, but he's showing a bit of blood to the nose. But no, seemingly no effects as Kay McKay moves forward and throws some roundhouses and works in the body. And Caparello comes back, timing McKay coming in. And this has developed into a fantastic... Oh! oh big big fight landed. And McKay shakes it off. He's eaten bigger, he says, as McKay comes forward. And some blood coming from McKay's nose. But Blake Caparello showing his strength, his technique, and his power that we've spoken about. It's not reflected in his KO record. He's already got some blood coming from McKay McKay, but McKay McKay's been here many, many times as a true professional. He's come out of retirement to give exactly this, a challenge to young Blake Caparello. Sam LeBrun has done a wonderful job bringing on Kate, Blake Caparello. Got the Victorian Championship in only his third fight, defended it once, and now here he is, the WBF Asia Pacific light heavyweight title. So far, it's playing in line with the bookmakers. $1.30 for Caparello, $3 for McKay. And Troy, the tide has certainly moved in favour of Caparello. Oh, absolutely. And Caparello is the... Round what two. a wonderful round. What a big, round. Big, big round for Caparello. Big as he stalks back. And Sammy Avun is very happy. Oh. Seconds out as we approach round three. Another exciting match. It's a war for sure. A civil war in the centre ring. Round three of the main event, fight seven of the Bob Rose Cup. It's Blake Caparello, the Green Bay Golden Boy, getting the better of Kane McKay, the junkyard dog from Geelong, in the first two rounds. McKay in the grey trunks, Caparello in the black trunks with the white piping. And Caparello had a brilliant round two. Troy. Wonderful round two. And uh, look, he, he's had some uh, great sparring sessions of late with Sakio Bika, Rob Medley, Shannon Taylor, Kerry Foley. Kariz Karayuki and Michael Bowling in Sydney. So Blake Caparello, wow, there's some big names there. And uh, he is just fighting like a true champion at the moment. Beautiful long range combination punching and just wonderful timing when K McKay gets in tight. He's looking for a signature win over another name opponent. He beat Joel Casey in his last out in Caparello. 
looks at this stage and Caparello is imposing his style of fight and like it on the inside and getting out of trouble there using some good lateral movement. Loves showing, the uppercut, doesn't he? Uh, all the skills. Like Caparello. Loves the uppercut. And he's proving strong enough to hold his own during the close quarters mauling that Kay McKay is trying to put on him. He lands a couple of crisp punches again on Kay McKay, but Kay McKay moves forward. He's only got one gear and that's forward and hard. And he's really going to give Caparello a thorough test here tonight. Caparello showing he can bang. He's also showing he's got a good chin to go with the skills and toughness. And we'll find out about his heart tonight. And it looks like there's a little mouse opening up over the left eye of Kay McKay. And Caparello spotted that. He's firing in those jabs and he's going after it. He's, pin he's pinpointing the... Uh and for a guy who's 4-0, for a boxer who's 4-0, his ring generalship is just outstanding. He's using all parts of the ring and he's moving Kay McKay around now. And it's Caparillo that's moving forward on McKay. And he's got him on the ropes again. And McKay comes off the ropes again. What a crowd-pleasing, wonderful servant to the Victorian boxing oh, game he's has been Kay McKay. Sensation. 30, 32 years of age, Kay McKay. And uh, look, he's going to leave nothing in the petrol tank. Make no mistake about it. With Blake Cap Caparello actually putting, he's putting on a clinic at the moment, isn't he? He's uh, great combinations, great footwork and skills. He's slick, and he's getting the upper hand due to his ac accurate punching. I'd love to see the punch stats on this fight. Blake's landing a lot of good, clean punches, but we already knew that Kane McKay had a great chin, so no surprises. No there. surprises there, and I uh, wouldn't be surprised if this, if this goes the distance as well. Caparello's never been. It's a, an interesting journey, the, the, uh, the 12 rounds. Yeah, he's never been. You, you, you really never know. But at the moment, it's all Caparello. And I've seen some fights where Kane McKay does take a while to warm up to it. And look at his fight versus Tim Bell. We actually had Tim Bell in trouble at some stage there in the later rounds. Yep. So one thing we do know is McKay, McKay can go the distance. Three. Another great round for Caparello. Schedule for 10 as we go towards 11 o'clock. Let's go on 11 o'clock. Friday night, Nick Couture seconds out, round four. As we start round four of the vacant WBF Asia Pacific light heavyweight title, Blake Caparello, not having it all his own way, but doing enough certainly to win the judges' attention for those first three rounds, Troy, against Kane, the junkyard dog, McKay. And uh, a, lot, a lot at stake here, and the Bob Rose Cup, a, 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 tremendous, uh, a tremendous cup, the great Collingwood champion, Bob Rose, synonymous with football and uh, was also quite a good boxer in his, uh, in his younger years. He was the Northern Victorian lightweight champion and Bob Rose had to choose between boxing and footy and footy got the benefits, but uh, here tonight we remember the great Bob Rose as a boxer. Caparello looking to assert his authority again. He's, he's just boxed, uh, as I said, he's put on a clinic these first three rounds. Joel Casey, well, he sustained more punishment than Rufus Dawes. Well, this is actually a really exciting matchup. Caparello ranked, ranked four in Australia by the Australian National Boxing Federation. Kane McKay ranked five in Australia by the Australian National Boxing Federation. And what we do know is Kane McKay has experience. He's had 104 rounds. Blake Caparello's had 24. But you would know it by the, the, the display that Blake Caparello has put on so far in this fight. One thing that's uh, not in question, Kane McKay's intestinal fortitude. He is a sensation and he will fight for the very last breath. He is, uh, he is one of the warriors. Blake Caparello. Oh, but a big right hand, a big left hand there by Blake Caparello. And McKay shakes it off like the junkyard dog. Two or three big shots to the head, really effective power shots from Blake Caparello. Lands another to the temple of the junkyard dog, but he won't be swayed and moves back into the fray like the Spartan warrior that he is. He's so great for the game as the gatekeeper. And who knows, he could turn the tide. He's been there many, many times. And he's, Blake Caparello has yet to see the deep waters. And Kane McKay has seen it many, many times. So there's still a lot of this fight to go. But at the moment, Caparello landing big shots. They're going to get the judges' attention and win him rounds unless Kane McKay does something more to stem the tide of this fight. When Caparello gets separation, wow, those... Uh Oh, beautiful left uppercut, up. left uppercut from Caparello. He's got it all, hasn't he? He can fight in close, he can fight at range. And despite being rocked by the power shots, Kane McKay absorbs the blows, comes in and clinches, 
and keeps moving forward. It's got a familiar pattern here, but you can't stop Kane McKay. You won't shake him off his game plan. Well, but there's a massive left hand there by Caparello. Well, the junkyard dog saying, I've taken your best. Yeah, I'm still here, youngster, and we'll see if you're there in the later rounds of this fight. It must be taking its toll. I was taking on his Kane fight. McKay. And Kane McKay's face is marked up. He's seen some shots tonight, but he's still there's there. There's another big right hand he's and another there. left hand. And that's there. the power of experience. And McKay comes in with some combinations of his own, working the body. Oh and another yeah. best round for Kane McKay. I'm not sure if he's, he took it yet, but he really started to find his legs there, Troy. Oh, much better round there by Kane McKay, but gee, he sustained some punishment late in that round. Did he? This is a colossal fight. One of the best fights of the year so far, no doubt. Main events. Round five, fight seven. It's the vacant WBF Asia Pacific light heavyweight title favorite Blake, the Greenvale Golden Boy Caparello, getting the better of things against Kane, the junkyard dog McKay from Geelong. And it was Kane McKay's best round, Troy, but did he do enough for you to win I, that round? I don't, look, definitely his best round, Kane McKay, but I don't think he did quite enough to, to steal that round off, uh, off Caparello. I would agree with you there. I've got it to four rounds to zero for Caparello. That's the point. We'll keep making the point. Kane McKay's been in a lot of long, torrid wars, and that's how he likes them. Yeah, he likes to take them long, and he likes to test these youngsters coming through. And Blake Caparello brings a 4-0 record. He's just a pup in the boxing game, and he's in against a veteran that's had over 100 rounds and is giving him a thorough examination tonight in front of a standing room only, full house at Northern Town Hall, and a great exchange again, marking the first vigorous en engagement in the fifth round. And McKay keeps relentlessly coming forward. There may not be a great deal of power on those punches, but they're relentless, and they're starting to land, and Caparello comes back with some combinations of his own. There's a lot of headhunting going on. There's not some of the body work that was going on earlier, Troy. You're absolutely right, Patrick, and uh, it looks to be a mouse uh, with under Blake Caparello's right eye. I think he, Kay McKay may have opened that up there. That's the cumulative force of McKay's punches, and McKay's looking like the wily veteran. Some good head movement in this round, some good lateral movement. He's got his footwork going, he's drawing Caparello into the ropes, and you'd say McKay has the best of the early going here in round he five. Has, yeah. Capitalising on that momentum shift we spoke about going, earlier. Going downstairs, working the body of Caparello. Caparello's cut. Trying to take the wind out of the sails. Of, uh, Interesting to see how Blake, but an excellent right hand landed there by Caparello. As Howard Lee said, this is shaping as a real fight of the year contender, Troy. Abs oh, absolutely, Patrick. This is, uh, this is one for the ages. It's, uh, it's had everything. Absolutely everything. And Kane McKay, well... Kane McKay's relentless work in the body, and Caparello comes back. It's a seesawing battle to and fro. Kane McKay's punch output has been outstanding in this round. He's really taken it up a notch. I think he senses that Caparello may have been getting away from this fight, and now he's choosing to take a stand as he draws Caparello into the ropes. And Caparello willingly says, yes, I'll come in there and trade with you, veteran, and we'll see what you've got. As McKay nice lands three or four punches, and the Greenville Golden Boy lands a few of his own. And some excellent exchanges in tight, right in front of the commentary and Kane McKay moving around, exhibiting some ring generalship himself. His counter punching's been uh, it's been quite breathtaking actually, Kane McKay. And he's a razor sharp margin between these two in round five as Kane McKay rounds a valiant comeback trying to win himself the round. If he keeps going at this rate, this could be the first round as Caparello opens up with some big overhand left shots. Oh, yeah. And that's the round of the fight so far. This Excellent is round. sensational. And I think oh. that's my first round for Kane McKay's. We've got our first drop of blood oh, on the score sheet. We're more than halfway through this championship fight. Seconds out, round six. And it's round six, fight seven of the Bob Rose Cup, the WBF Asia Pacific Light Heavyweight title, and the sparks are flying here. They both want that belt. Blake Caparello, the favorite, installed at $1.30, and he had it his, all his own way for the first four rounds, but Kane McKay made a comeback in that round. I had it for Kane McKay as his first round, Troy. You were with Caparello. Why, yep. did you, why did you plump for Caparello in the last round? Well, I just thought, uh, I thought he took more, more of those punches on the gloves, Caparello. So I thought, just with the, the, uh, the brevity of Caparello's punches, I just thought he just just got ahead in that round. But uh, Well, that's the sort of uncertainty that creates the excitement and tension that's in the air in Morven tonight. And we've got the young bull versus the old bull. And McCain McClay blood streaming from his nose right now. But he found something in that last round five. And he, uh, for me, shaded that round. And there's a nasty cut under the right eye of Blake Caparello. So 
obviously Kane McKay. There's a he'll be honing in that, on that as a target. This is the first time Blake's been cut, so we're going to find out. Doesn't look like he's panicking yet at the sight of blood. Sometimes you see fighters uh, alters their game plan, but he's sticking to the game plan that's been hatched by Sam LaBruna. Excellent game plan, and it's working for him so far. And these two gentlemen boxers, even though there was a bit of heat before the fight, uh, this fight certainly lived up to its billing as a potential fight of the year contender. Kane McKay looking to get back and do what he did and in, the, in that last round. Blake Caparello's foot movement is so effective that it's hard for Kane McKay in this round to get within the punching distance he yeah. needs. Great body work from Caparello as they move forward. These two warriors not giving in. Young Bull, old Bull, great right hook landed by Caparello then. But McKay doesn't seem to be getting the momentum out of There's his There's a great fight. left hand there by Caparello. And McKay comes back and lands a couple of shots of his own. They both like it in there. Oh, he's, he's really uh, tickling the ribcage here of Blake Caparello. Kane McKay, he's, he thinks that could be a weakness, but uh, boy, oh boy, has this fight had it all. Yeah, Caparello early in the round had the upper hand due to his footwork and accurate punching. But McKay's drawn, the junkyard dog's drawn him in on the ropes again and starting to land a few of his own. will certainly get the judges' attention. And that's where he's going to uh, have the biggest impact on this fight. Drag it on the ropes, make it bloody and make it rough. A great combination. Four or five punches from Caparello and McKay warms up to this. Steps back in the fray and says, youngster, you'll need a bit more than that on them to stop me. Oh, a big left hand there by Blake Caparello. Followed up with a right hook. Oh. Caparello landing, having his almost his best round of the fight, you could say, Troy. Really, on the outside, on the inside. Got a cut under his eye. It hasn't seemed to bother him. He's come. He wants this belt. And he's ready to go long distance. He hasn't fought this many rounds before. That was a real case of tickling the ivories there by Blake Caparello. He's trained for 12 rounder and here we are. We're going on good body shots there by Caparello. Showing all the benefits of his training. Fantastic round for Caparello. And he certainly uh, brought things back in his favour. Certainly did a wonderful round by Blake Caparello. Round seven. Blood, sweat and tears. What a fight. That's round seven, fight seven of the Bob Rose Cup. The favourite, the younger Blake Caparello in against the season veteran Kane McKay. And Caparello really regained the ascendancy for mine in the last round, round six. Troy, how did you have it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, clearly. Clearly five, Caparello five round and six. six. Punch, punch combinations. Showing good conditioning thus far. His fitness is in order. He really, just, it's, it's up to McKay. I mean, does, does McKay have that home run punch that can change everything here? Well, he's, he's just got to get in and make it dirty and scrappy and try and bend Blake Caparello to fight to his game plan. Well, I think he's looking for the home run punch, quite frankly. Because I, I think, just by looking at Caparello, I think he'll go the distance. So if it, it goes the distance, well, it'll be a points decision and Caparello's well in front. McKay trying to get inside to smother Caparello down, take away the leverage on that powerful left, which has been the difference in the fight for mine. Big, strong, but there's some really worrying combinations for the McKay camp. And he put it together and he rips again to the body like an old school fighter, Caparello, in against a true old school fighter himself as McKay comes back to the body. And I'm really loving the inside work these two are doing for it. It's been tremendous, Patrick. It's more body work than a panel beaters. It's it's just been it's been out of this world and the, the boxing fans here at Melbourne Town all there they are appreciating this. It's Blake Caparello hones in and, and the blood pouring from Kane McKay's nose. Oh, but this is where he likes it. The junkyard dog on the ropes. And you've got to respect Caparello. Oh, right. nice right hand there by Kane McKay on the counter punch. And every time Kane McKay lands a big right, Caparello's coming back. He just will not allow McKay to execute his game, game plan the way he wants. And he's prepared to get in there. And another great shot there from Blake Caparello. Looking like a seasoned veteran. And his ring generalship, he brings it out to the centre of the ring. And that's where he's going to do the most damage. And that's where Kane McKay is vulnerable in the centre of the ring, where Caparello's reach advantage will come into play. Caparello showed a real willingness to mix it up. He's not sitting in behind his jab, although when he does, he does look like a superior fighter, but he's saying, I'm going to improve my inside game by beating one of the great Victorian inside fighters at his own game. Yeah, well put, Patrick. Uh, he again hones into the body, the ribcage of Kane McKay. 
and some fantastic body shots, and that's really the difference between a main event and some of the oh, fights we saw earlier where there was a lot of head hunting, and these two are just charging at the body, trying to get those elbows down and open up the opportunity for the head shots. As Caparello relentlessly moves in and landing shots, are showing great evasive skills as McKay comes off the ropes, and great straight left from Caparello, and that got McKay's attention, but he moves forward. What does Caparello have to do here to rock McKay? That, that's extraordinary. Oh, oh, and a, and a punch one on the after bell, the but there's two gentlemen, nothing in it, as these two warriors go back to their corner, and what a great fight this is turning out to be. Okay, let's start. It's the main event of the Bolt Rose Cup 2010 and the crowd is really warming to this fantastic fight between Blake Caparello and Kane McKay and it's a 10 rounder, the WBF Asia Pacific Light Heavyweight title is on the line and these two are waging a brutal war, both of them want that belt and the opportunities that belt can bring, it's a good regional title and here we are, Blake Caparello, current Victorian Light Heavyweight Champion stepping up to his first 10 rounder against the Junkyard Dogs, we've seen it all before he's been there before and he wants to take the youngster in the deep water who did you have in round 7 Troy? Yeah look, it's uh, history repeating, Blake Caparello again I thought, done enough in that round some big body punches and uh, some, some tremendous left hooks in that round by Caparello. And I've got Caparello up six rounds to one right now. And Kane McKay just moving forward, hoping he can expose maybe a conditioning chink. Or if there's any chinks in the armour when he takes Blake Caparello beyond what he, where he's ever been before. And then we'll see about his conditioning. He says he's fit. He says he's got the pedigree to pull this off. And at the moment he is pulling it off. The youngster's backing up his words. But Kane McKay's not letting him have it all its own way. And he's had moments in this fight where he's really worried, the youngster. Well, as you said, the unexplored territory for Blake Caparello, 10 rounds. And that's what Kane McKay wants to turn into a life and death struggle. He loves it in there. Big body shot by Kane McKay as he moves forward. He's continuing to execute his game plan. A nice, nice uppercut there by McKay. Uh, boxing pride of Geelong Town. Yep. A big crowd from Geelong up here. Their old crowd favourite, Kane McKay. Every single time he steps onto the canvas, the crowd gets their money's worth. He's the promoter's dream. He takes fights at short notice, and he'll fight these young guys. How are guys like Blake Caparello going to get the experience? They get it by fighting the junkyard dog. Absolutely, Patrick, and boy, oh boy, haven't the boxing fans of Melbourne got their money's worth tonight. It's been a, a slugfest of the highest order. Kane McKay, some good punch output. Here in round eight, getting the better of things in this exchange in the middle. This is the first time we've seen it in the fight. Caparello really not so much taking a round off. But McKay's dominating, he's waiting patiently, trying to pick up his punches. Okay, McKay loving the infighting, not landing a lot of these shots, and not really heavy shots, but punch output. Looking to set records for the amount of punches around thrown here is the junkyard dog. Oh, and look at him. he McKay. wants it again. Showing the chin to the youngster and going to the body. Unprecedented toe-to-toe -to -toe action between these two. And Caparello knowing he's oh, got a big, big read and big lands, hand lands on the Caparello. counter and calls oh, him on. And calls oh, him on. This is calls over. Him on. And Kane McKay oh. in unprecedented scenes has shown his chin and been stopped by the youngster. And Blake Caparello is the WBF Asia Pacific Light Heavyweight Champion in one of the most brutal title fights you'll see. Good day, representative of Ultra Chin, please come down. Norm George, I called him several times. Maybe, yeah, hasn't heard the call, Norm George, or a lady or a gentleman from Ultra Chin, great supporters of tonight's big program. Tom, give it a big bang, thank you. <laughs> Referee Malcolm Bob has got the contest. Two minutes, 55 seconds into round eight. Ladies and gentlemen, would you congratulate the new WBF Australasian Pacific Light Heavyweight Champion, Blake Caparello. <laughs> and let's not forget the gallant performance by the Jack Guard dog, Kane McKay. Peter, that was beyond the call of duty. What a grueling battle.